Good morning, and thank you for logging on to CRS Overview. My name is Wendy Huckins, and I am the training coordinator here at Prime MLS. All of our webinars are conducted in a listen-only mode. We still uh, encourage you to ask your questions, though. So go ahead and find that little chat box, open that up, and at any point over the next hour, if you have a question, you can type that right into that chat box. I'm going to get your questions in real time, and I'm more than happy to stop and answer questions as they come in. Additionally, I'm happy to stay at the conclusion of the webinar and answer any questions you have at that time as well. All of our webinars are available for all of our Prime MLS members to attend. And if you happen to be a New Hampshire licensee, you can also potentially earn one CE for your license renewal. How that will work is if you have been logged in for the full session, about 30 minutes after we wrap things up, I will be sending out an email with quiz access. If you're a New Hampshire licensee that would like to earn that one CE, go ahead and take that quiz. The quiz is always completely optional. And if you take the quiz and you pass the quiz with an 80% or higher, you will earn that one CE for your New Hampshire license renewal. Currently, the other states are not offering these CE credits as our Zoom format does not meet their requirements. Now, just keep in mind a couple of things about taking the quiz and getting your affidavit. The whole process is completely manual on my part. So at the conclusion of the webinar, I need to review the attendance list. And then I send that email with quiz access out to everybody who's been in the full session. Only take that quiz if you're a New Hampshire licensee that wants to earn that one CE. And if you do take the quiz, you're not automatically going to receive that affidavit. Once again, I have to review quiz scores, put together your affidavit, and then email those out. Every quiz does have an expiration date. So with this quiz closing on Thursday, October 26th at 5 p.m., um, I will try my hardest to get those affidavits out to you uh, before the end of business day on Friday. Just keep in mind, if you do want to take the quiz, you need to start and finish the quiz before Thursday, the 26th at 5 p.m. If you are in a crunch and your license is due for renewal and you need that CE quicker than Friday, just let me know once you've taken the quiz and I'll put a rush on getting that affidavit to you. If you don't get that quiz access and you think you should within about 30 minutes of the webinar, go ahead and reach out to me at training at primemls.com or check your junk and spam folder for that email. Let's go ahead and hop into the topic, and we're talking all about CRS today. What exactly is CRS? Well, CRS is a public record database that's integrated into Paragon, your uh, MLS software, in a number of different ways. The information that's in CRS is being pulled from public record information that's available from states, counties, and towns and cities. You are going to see um, several ways that you can utilize CRS throughout your Paragon experience. You can use CRS to autofill several tax-related fields when you are inputting a new listing. <clears throat> you can also view tax reports um, from your Paragon search options, results, and you also have access to jump into CRS from the map. And in CRS, you're able to search for properties, search for comps, create mailing labels, and export information, plus so much more. I never, you know, am shy about saying that CRS is my favorite Prime MLS member benefit because there is so much information in CRS and it can be so helpful with your day-to-day -day business activities. So I really want to um, help you understand all the great features and benefits of using CRS over the next hour. 
you have multiple access points into CRS and great news. CRS is single sign-on access. That means you never need a username or password to access CRS. You're able to access CRS when you log on to your Prime MLS dashboard. You have an access point from there. And then when you are in Paragon, like I said, I'm going to show you how you can access CRS from the map, also from your results, and also from your um, uh, individual uh, property reports in Paragon as well. Um, so we'll be going over all this information over the next 58 minutes. With that, let's go ahead and jump into the system and we'll start right on your Prime MLS dashboard. This is where you have access to log right into um, CRS. So you have that access right underneath your Paragon Connect asset, as, access point. You also have access to your Prime MLS help desk. And this is going to be helpful for you to review any information we cover in this webinar because if you click on your help desk access point here, or from behind that bright yellow button, that's gonna take you to your help desk. And this is where you can review a previously recorded webinar. Under recorded webinars, if you open up that section, you're gonna find your CRS recorded webinar under member benefits. So if you click under member benefits, you have that um, ability to watch a previously recorded webinar right from here. In addition to that uh, full webinar, you also have a section on your help desk. If we go back to our home button and we log on to, um, we click into Prime MLS Benefits and Tools, this is where you're going to find a quick video on your two CMA options that are available to you in CRS. So uh, if you want to review that information, you're going to come right to your help desk click on Prime MLS Benefits and Tools, and then you have that quick video on those CMA options for you here. With that said, let's go ahead and log on to CRS. Once again, I could either access the database from here, or if I am in Paragon, I have that access point. From behind my tax menu, I can click on CRS Database, and that's gonna open me to my CRS homepage. We're going to start right here at the top right corner and point out that when you're using CRS, they also have their own help site to help you navigate all the great information that's available to you here. And if you click on that help button, it's going to open up in a new browser tab and CRS always shows you, you know, um, options for doing things on that page that you clicked the help button. So because you're on that home page, it's going to give you all that information on running different types of searches. And then if you don't find what you're looking for here, you can always use that search button or check out one of the um, recently viewed article selections. If you looked for information previously in the CRS help desk, and this should help you find what you're looking for. I'm going to close out of the help site and go back to my CRS homepage. We're going to go to settings after we've kind of gone through some information in CRS. I think it will make more sense at the end of the webinar. And then if I jump over to my left side option, you're going to see I have some branded information and I was able to add this information from behind my settings. And then in the middle section, I have two options with my home page. Right now, I'm on my property search tab. If I was doing prospecting, I could come right in and I could click to that prospecting tab and do that from here. We will get to prospecting towards the end of the webinar. But first, let's talk about all the great searches you can run from your CRS homepage. 
Important information, anytime you're using CRS, you're always going to want to start with your county. And the system is going to remember the last county that you were searching in. And under settings, you can set up to four counties that you typically search in most option and you, uh, mo most often, and they can populate for you here every time you're running searches. But if you ever need to um, search a different county than what's showing, you can click on that little X to remove that information. And as you start typing in, um, you know, the county you're looking for, options are going to populate in the whole New England area because that is Prime MLS's um, service area. So if I was looking for Washington County down in Vermont, I can just scroll down and once I see that, I can make that selection and it's going to populate here for me. In my search bar here, I'm able to search for properties in Washington County by owner's last name, by the address, by the parcel ID, by that span number for properties that are in Vermont, and also by MLS number. You'll notice here I have this little question mark, and when I hover over that, that gives me details on running a wildcard search. So if I use that, um, percentage symbol that allows me to run a wildcard search. And maybe I might want to use this option if I'm not sure of the spelling of something or if, I, <clears throat> excuse me, or if I want to find all the options or like the example they're showing here of lake. If I wasn't sure the name of the lake, I could put that in and then it's going to bring up all those options that have lake within that um, search option. So um, using the wildcard search can be another good way to find information while you're here in CRS. <clears throat> in Washington County, I'm gonna look for a specific address. So I'm gonna start with that street number and that's 179. And you'll notice I'm starting to get information that I could select from owner's name that would have that information in it, the street address, and then also MLS numbers. And I'm going to continue to put in a little bit more information to search for the property that I am looking for. And that is on Barton Road. And you'll notice that I don't even have to finish spelling that out. It populates for me and I can select that as soon as I see it pop up. So I'm going to click on that address and it's going to bring me right to that property report on that address. Now I may see some photos here. If the property was in the MLS, it's going to pull those photos um, from what was in Paragon. And keep in mind that what you see on your property report will vary from state to state, county to county, and city to city. Because remember, this is pulling all that public record database information into this one property report. So the information does have to be available online for CRS to pull it into the property report. So if you think about some of those very little towns, particularly in Vermont and New Hampshire, that you have to go down to town hall and they're only open on Thursdays from three to five, um, and then Sally at town hall goes behind her desk and she opens that big, you know, file cabinet and she pulls out that um, manila folder with a tax card. Well, that kind of information that has not been put online by that town obviously can't be found by CRS. So you're going to see different information on this page based on, you know, what the system is able to pull in from all those points of interest. Now, I do find it very interesting that CRS is able to pull um, power production information. And that's because the states of New Hampshire, Vermont, and Massachusetts are all collecting power production um, information at the state county and city level. So this particular property in Vermont, if I scroll down and I kind of get an overview of the different kinds of information I'm going to see, as I get to the bottom of this page, that is where I would find any power production information. And also I'm going to find access points into FEMA. So not only will I have this section with FEMA that will give me some description uh, on potential flood um, 
uh, zone information on this property, but I have this clickable firm panel ID here, and that allows me to click on that link and it opens up FEMA to give me even more information on this property. So once again, all I did was scroll down to the bottom of my options here on my CRS property report, and I found that information on FEMA with that clickable firm panel ID. Plus, I have that power production information on this property, and this is for um, photovoltaic power, which is that solar power, and it lets me know um, where that uh, power production is mounted and the size, and it's also giving me the information that it pulled this from a public record source. So lots of great information here for you on your property report. If we want to go back to our home page, couple of options, we can either click on home or we can use that back arrow. Either one of those is going to take us right back here where we could do another type of search. Instead of looking for an individual property, maybe I want to gather all the addresses on a street. So we'll change our county and we'll hop into Merrimack County um, here in New Hampshire. And I will look for properties on Constitution Ave. So as I start typing that in, notice that that pops up for me. This just happens to be Prime MLS's location. So if I click on that, I'm going to be able to find um, our location at 45 Constitution Ave. Notice not only do I find properties in Concord, but I'm also finding properties in Franklin. And that's because both of these cities are in the county of Merrimack, and both of these cities have uh, a street named Constitution Ave. So if I was not interested in seeing the information from Franklin, I could select that information. So make a check mark and then go down and I can tell the system to remove um, the property addresses that I've checked. Now I'm just focusing on the um, four properties here in Concord, you know, that I wanted to see. I could also have selected all four of these and told the system to keep the ones I've checked. But Typically, I just go with the fewest um, things that I have to check and then do one of these options. From here, I could create labels for these four properties. I could export this list and I can also print this list. And if I wanted to save these results, I could click on save results, give them a name. I'll just say Constitution Ave Concord. And I can submit that. Oh, can't have a comma. I always forget that here. So we'll take that comma out, then we'll hit submit. And now that this lets me know my list of these properties have been saved. So once again, if I wanna go back to my homepage, I can click on home or use that back arrow. And if I want to see those saved results, I have that access point here where I can click on the drop down and I can see um, that list. So if I click on it, it would bring it right back up. From here, I can also do an advanced search. So if I open up my advanced search option, it's going to let me search either by map or as I scroll down, I have the option of searching once again by street name, city, state. I can search by school zones. And notice after each section, you have the submit button. And it kind of makes it look like these are all separate searches, right? That's not really the intention. The intention of these multiple submit buttons is so once you put in your information, you can hit submit without having to scroll all the way down to the bottom to find that, you know, um, submit option. So it's just a little time saver here in CRS. So if I wanted to search for properties that had sold in the last six months, I could make that selection from search by property value. I could click six months. It automatically populates that date. And then I just need to tell the system the area that I want this information about. So we'll go ahead and just stay in Concord. And as I start typing that in, it pops up so I can select it. And I can just hit the submit button. 
Once I do that, I'm able to see that there were 248 properties um, that were sold over this last six months period. So once again, I can go through and I can look at this list of properties. I can select or unselect properties and have them removed or keep the ones that I'm selecting from this list. I can jump to that individual property report by clicking on the address or by that little arrow. Either one is going to take me right to that property report. And from this individual property report, I can scroll back and forwards to other property reports in that list. If I want to go back to my search results, I can do that from here. And that's going to bring up this whole list. And this is a good time to point out all these little icons that are next to some of these properties. So I have my legend here that lets me know what those icons mean. And that means that this property um, has some Paragon information available. So when I hover over that little tag, it lets me um, see that MLS number, that it was sold, the sold date, and the sold price. And that MLS number is a clickable number, meaning I can click on that and that's going to open up the agent full report on that property so I can see that information from the Paragon system. I can close that out and I can go right back to here. And notice I also have that little blue um, house and that lets me know that this is a property that is available for lease. And once again, I have that access point um, letting me know the date that it was inputted into Paragon for uh, to be available um, to lease. And then I've also got that clickable number here. So anytime you see any of these icons, you're going to be able to jump right to that MLS number and get that information um, in that familiar Paragon view. Let's see, what else do we wanna talk about here? So as we scroll down, we've already talked about your option of selecting and unselecting to remove or keep the ones you've checked. And again, from here, you can create labels, export the list or print the list. And notice you do have you know, over 17 pages of results here. Once again, if you wanted to save these results, you have that option. Or if you wanted to change your search results, you can do that as well by going back to that search page and modifying any of your information here. We will go back to our homepage once again and kind of work our way down and talk about our sections at the bottom recent properties and saved property reports. So on your left side, you've got your recent properties and these are properties that you've recently viewed. The system is always gonna keep uh, up to the um, last 20 properties that you've reviewed. So you could always come back here and see those. So if I wanted to see all 20, I could make that selection and then just click. Usually it will let me click there. I guess my computer is not going to cooperate. That happens sometimes when I am on Zoom. Um, Brian has asked, create labels for mailing out stuff. Absolutely. So that creates that mailing label to do some snail mail marketing um, if you're still marketing um, that way. Now, this list of properties with recent views, um, you can edit this. But remember, as you view more properties, these will be pushed down and, you know, the list kind of is self-editing for the last 20. But of course, if you ever wanted to edit yourself, you can click on that X and it's going to remove that information. And if you wanted to jump to that property report, you can click on the address or once again, that little arrow and it's going to take you there. On the right side, you have saved property reports. So any of those property reports that you view, and if you think you're going to want to come back to that information, you can click on save, and then that will save it here. And that will save you a little time instead of having to search for it by putting in the address and the county, you can just jump right to that report. And we're going to do that in just a moment. Cindy has a question. Does the database give um, phone numbers and email addresses. No, it does not. That information is not available here in CRS at this time. Is it something that potentially could be added? Uh, quite possibly. They're always looking for ways to pull in more information. Um, so um, 
you never know what might come in the future. But currently, the answer to that question is no. It does not give phone numbers and email addresses. Um, okay, so we have done a basic search by entering a property address. We have looked at a list of street addresses. We've done an advanced search. So now let's start to explore a property report on one of our saved listings. So I'm going to click on four boxwood circle. If you've taken some training classes with me, you know this is kind of my go-to property. And uh, here on the property report, you'll notice you get so much information about the property. So if I was doing a CMA on this property, I would would jump into CRS for a couple of reasons. First of all, I would be able to verify that I'm meeting with the owner of the property because I'm going to see that owner's name. Plus, I'm going to be able to start gathering some information about the property um, without even driving by and seeing it. So if it was ever in um, the MLS, I would see photos here. I have access to a map and we're going to use this map uh, later to create some mailing labels to maybe send out one of those just listed or just sold postcards um, to folks around the property. As I scroll down, you'll notice there are some fields that are editable. So there are five different fields here on my CRS property report that I can go in and edit because maybe I'm talking to this seller and he lets me know that he turned his three season porch into a fifth bedroom. Um, or maybe he tells me he added a second half bath. As I scroll down to get to the property characteristics, these are where my other four editable fields are. So if I wanted to change any of this information, I would just click in that editable field and then I can change that because maybe, you know, once again, he said he added a second half bath. When I make that change, I get another section. So this would be my sixth editable field um, that I could come in and type out something like half bath added in 2020. And these are notes just for myself on this property. When I'm adding these notes and when I'm changing information on any of these five editable fields, it's not showing on anybody else's view of this property in CRS. It's not changing any of the information about this property that was in Paragon. And it's certainly not sending any of this information to say the tax collector of the town. It's only changing this information for my view, maybe you know to help me pull together this CMA on this property that I'm doing for that seller. And I do have a lot of great information here. I may see some mortgage history if that information is available online, tax information as I'm scrolling back up. Um, as I scroll back down, I'm going to see, you know, different characteristics that the property has. And once again, if you look at any of these little triangles, you can open that up or close it up as needed, you know, depending on what you want to see on this view. If there was any power production, like um, that solar power photovoltaic information on this property, I would see that here. And if I wanted to explore this minimal flood zone risk that the property's in, I could click on that firm panel ID and go right into the FEMA website to get those details. And finally, as I scroll down, I'm even going to see that Paragon information. So as long as a listing agent has used CRS when they are inputting that listing into Paragon, that is syncing that property with CRS um, as well. So then that provides information like in a listing archive about the property, you know, when it's sold and listed, and you're going to see that at the bottom. Once again, you can email, you can save, you can print this report. And if you have a list, you can navigate back and forth through those different properties. And clicking on save report is how I got to this property from that saved report section down on the bottom right corner of my CRS homepage. From here, I also have a couple of other options. 
So right now I've just been looking at that property report. I can also go to comparables. Comparables is how I can use CRS to get uh, information on other properties that are so that have sold that are similar to this property. And CRS does two different quick CMAs for me. So this is where that little video on the Prime MLS Help Desk is going to come in handy because you can watch that video and decide which uh, option you want to use. We're going to explore the quick CMA. The CMA and client report is just a little prettier report. It has some more editable fields. And in addition to CRS automatically pulling those comps, you have the ability to add your own comps by address or MLS number if you're using that CMA client report option. How does CRS know stuff on the house that has never been in the MLS? Brian, they are pulling that information from many different sources. So it's all coming from public information about the property. That may be, you know, uh, tax records. It could be um, deeds. Um, it's getting that information from from many, many sources. And that's why I am such a big fan of CRS because it's doing all that legwork for you. Instead of you having to go in and find the information, it's pulling from all those public record information and putting it right here so you can access it. And not only does it do that, it'll, it will even do a quick CMA for you. So we'll click on quick CMA. And with just one click, I now have a CMA that I could share with the owner of this property via email. I could save it um, and then send it out, you know, from my computer, or I could even print it out. We're going to scroll down and then just so you can kind of see what you're able to get just by clicking on that quick CMA under comparables. And then we'll come back to the top and talk about all these options. So you're going to see photos, a map. You're going to have some graph information. Search parameters is letting you know how CRS pulled these comps. So I'll see my subject property, which is for Boxwood, and I will see the comps that the system pulled for me, which are seven comparable properties, and it's all based on the information here. So plus or minus, you know, one um, bedroom, bathroom, it's within the acreage of 20% square footage of our subject property within 20%. And it's a pretty um, tight distance. Right now, it's pulling for properties that have sold in less than a mile from my subject property. I can open this up and go anywhere up to 10 miles. And also it's looking over the last 12 months. This is also editable, just like all these other fields. Anytime you see that little drop down, there's more options for you. So if I wanted to narrow this down to the last six months and say maybe open it up mileage wise um, for, you know, one and a half miles, I can now change that, hit submit, and it's going to repopulate information here for me. And instead of seven, now I have 12 different comps. Let's just go right up to the top here quickly and talk about the information here. So you're gonna see some estimated market price values. And if you want more details on how this information was derived, you can go down to market value calculation and open that section up. And it's gonna give you all those details on how CRS came up with these numbers here. If you have any improvements on the home, remember, you know, we had said something like, you know, they added that half bath. You can put that in here and you can have up to three different improvements on your subject property. And then you're going to see those photos. This is pulling from the last time the property was in the system. So if you don't see photos, that means the property's never, you know, been in the MLS. So there's no, you know, information that CRS can pull into this section. You're also going to see that map. So you can kind of uh, move around on the map zoom in and zoom out to see all those different properties that the system is pulling in for you. And as you hover on any of those numbers, it's giving you a peek at the details of that property. And then you could go into the MLS agent full report, or you can click um, and view the CRS property um, report on any of those comps. 
as you scroll down here, you can also um, view the information from your comp list. So once again, if you click on the address, that will um, pull up that CRS property report on that specific property. I'm just going to close that out and go back to my list. And anywhere that you have that little icon, um, meaning that there's uh, MLS information um, available, you can hover on that. And of course, if you want to click into the Paragon information, you can click on that MLS number. Um, you can also edit this list. So based on opening this up and looking at it, you may decide this is not a good comp for this um, subject property. And maybe there are a couple of them that are not a good comp. So we'll just pretend I opened up that information, reviewed it, and decided it didn't match my subject property. I've selected those. And then I can come down and remove checked. And that takes those away from that list. If I ever wanted to restore, I have that option here. And I have even more options available to me um, behind settings in terms of my comparable report. Not only can I rearrange the information here. So if I wanted, you know, condition um, to, you know, show um, first average and I can click in there and change. If there was any change in that information, I'm just sorting the information in the column by clicking on that header. I can also move columns around. So if I wanted to click on condition in that header and hold and drag, I could drag that over here. So it's one of my first columns that I'm seeing. Last sold date, condition, last sales price. So maybe it would make more sense to keep those um, date and price together. And I can manipulate this list however it makes sense to me. So um, if I wanted to move any of this other information around, click, hold, and drag, and I can change how it displays. I can even choose different options for these columns, and that's going to be behind that settings option. What else do we want to talk about here? Um, I think this is a great option. If you want to do a quick and easy CMA for your folks, you can log into CRS. You can click on that property report and then go right to comparables, and you've got a nice CMA that is done for your potential seller within just moments. And maybe you're giving them this to hold them over before you actually meet with them and maybe do a full presentation um, out of Paragon. You also have a new CMA option um, with quick CMAs in Paragon. So there's just another option for you would be kind of fun to run a couple of these uh, different quick CMAs and see how similar your results are and which ones you like the best. All right, from here, you can also do some prospecting. And uh, one way to go to the prospecting tab is going back to my property report on this property and then clicking on my view larger map. So if I click on view larger map, that opens me up to that area where my subject property is. And now you can see my subject property is even highlighted here on this map. What is the most accurate CMA source? Well, Cindy, you're going to have to kind of, you know, play around with that. The most accurate information is going to come from your knowledge as the real estate agent and looking at those comps and deciding which ones are truly the best match for that subject property. So um, options like CRS and Quick CMA and Paragon, they're just going to help you do that a little bit faster. But once again, it's going to be up to you to narrow that information down um, to make sure you're presenting, you know, the best comps for your seller. And it's really the agent who is the keeper of that information. When I am opening up that map, um, as I pointed out, my subject property is highlighted. I have a right side menu, and this is where we're going to select areas to start pulling in addresses. But you also have a left side menu, and that's behind these little arrows here. And this can provide you with some great information as well. If you have somebody that's specifically looking for school zone information, you have that ability to see this 
information um, very nicely with a good visual here in CRS. So if I click on that school information, I do want to uh, just zoom out on my map, though, because with the school zones in New Hampshire, typically you just have, you know, like one high school per town or even, you know, a couple of towns that share one high school. So I want to get a couple of different towns on my map so that when I toggle on high school zones, you're going to be able to see that information. So this does let me know there's a couple of options in Milford. There is that shared high school for Wilton and Linebro. And then Sohegan has their high school. And I can just, you know, continue to scroll on the map to see that information populate. I'm going to get back kind of over into Milford. And of course, you can also look at information for middle schools, and generally, you know, sometimes there's more than one middle school in a town. And then also you can even look for elementary schools. And I do kind of like to highlight Merrimack for that because they do have multiple elementary school options. So this is the section of Merrimack that would go to Reeds Ferry. This one goes to Mastercola. And then the folks in this area go to Thornton's Ferry. So great information behind your layers here. I'm going to toggle those off and we'll get back over to that Milford section and zoom in a little bit more. So you can see some recent sales. So if I go down um, to listings, I can open that up and then I can see properties that have sold. I can click on that. And you'll notice some information starting to populate with all those little tabs. Yes, there is great information within CRS, which is why it's really my favorite member benefit. So I can see um, the listing information and I could click on any of those tabs to see that sold information. I can also click and see properties that are currently for sale. So if I toggle that on, you're going to notice properties populating there for me. And of course, I'm going to have that little icon at the bottom to let me know what all those different little um, icons mean. So it makes sense. That little for sale sign is for properties that are for sale. I can close this section up and I can also look at recent sales from my map. So did I... Let's go up here to recent sales. And if I wanted to see properties that closed in the last three months, I can toggle that on. And it just takes a moment, but you'll start to see some color changes. So there's a color change. We've got a couple here and up here. And once again, you have that legend down at the bottom that lets you know, you know, what that color change means. So anything that's purple closed over 365,000. So you'll also notice that this legend changes based on what town you're in. Here in Milford, um, 365 is on the higher end, but somewhere like Wyndham or Bedford or Hollis, you know, that would be on the lower end. So this legend would update um, to whatever that market's norms are. And you can only have one of these toggles on for recent sales at a time, um, but that's okay because if you toggle on last 12 months, that obviously incorporates what has closed in the last three, six, and nine months. And of course, we're getting you know, lots more updates there because we're going back for a longer period of time. And it just takes a moment you know, for all those options to populate. I can close that off, close that out, and let's go back under listings and toggle that off so we have a clear map. I can also get FEMA information from this map as well. So if I toggle that on, I'm going to see those color changes, and I've got the legend down here. But once again, the best way to get FEMA information, in my opinion, is to go directly to that property. So I can kind of see here on my map, this property is in some sort of a flood zone. But if I click on that, it brings up that property report. I can view that property report. So it brings up those property, you know, um, 
quick details. And from the quick details, I can go right to the property report and then I can scroll right down here and I can get more information on those FEMA flood zones. So it breaks it all out for me, gives me better description, plus it gives me that clickable um, panel ID number that takes me right in to the source of the information, which is FEMA. And I got all this information just by being on that map and clicking into that property detail here. We'll go ahead and toggle that off and we will close up layers. But yes, lots of great information behind those layers. And now I can start collecting some information to do a mailing. So if I just, you know, listed this property, maybe I want everybody in this area to know that. And that's where I'd want to come over to my right side menu, go down to my magnifying glass. And this is where I start drawing shapes on the map. I have a polygon option, a rectangle option, a radius, and that freehand option, which is really going to let me draw whatever kind of squiggly lines for my neighborhood that I need. Well, this neighborhood is laid out very much in a rectangular shape, so it makes sense I would click on the rectangle. That turns my cursor into that shape drawing tool, and I can just click on the edge of this neighborhood and then bring this shape out to encompass that whole area that I want to collect addresses for. When I click on that, it lets me know, do I want to include this section? Or if I'm unhappy with this shape, I can always delete it and start over. Um, I'm going to go ahead and just X out of this so that I keep my shape, but maybe I also wanna let um, folks in this little neighborhood know that I've also listed this property because maybe these are very similar properties and I'm, you know, trying to um, get some interest with listing for me. So I can go back to my magnifying glass and then maybe I could click on my polygon shape and that just gives me a little more freedom to make some turns. I'm going to click anywhere I want to turn and I can kind of get this whole little neighborhood in there and then just come back to where I started and close up that shape. And once again, yes, I want to include this. So if I was all set, I could go ahead and include the selection. I do notice I have another question. Why three different options on that flood zone minimum? Because in that particular, uh, I'm sorry, let me give the question once again. Brian is asking why three different options for that flood zone being minimal, moderate, and um, I think there was one more. That's because that is how that property is rated in FEMA. So obviously, you know, that section of the property that's closest to that water body is more likely to flood than that section that is further away from it. So some properties have multiple zones within that particular parcel for those um, flood zone um, sections. And that's all determined by FEMA, which is the whole purpose of being able to go right to the source of that information, FEMA's website, and get all those details. Once I've selected uh, my properties here, I can go ahead and um, include the selection. And this is where I'm going to be able to start collecting those property addresses. But before we do that, once again, let me show a couple of other things. So I'm going to zoom in on my map a little bit. Let's X out of here and show you a couple of other little uh, tricks and tools that you can do here. You'll notice you have quite a few options here on your right side menu. You can go down, you can print this menu, uh, this map option, email it, save it, and even copy it. You can also do some measuring. So if you wanted to measure how far this property is, from the ice cream shop that just happens to be over here. You could use that measuring tool. Of course, anytime you're using the measuring tool, just know that it's an estimate. So you could come in and you could do that distance option and you can measure you know, how far this property is from the ice cream shop. Or if I zoom out, it's fairly close to the high school. So I could get some measurements on that. You can also um, get latitude and longitude on any of the properties showing on your map. 
by clicking under this little ruler section and clicking on latitude. Once again, that turns my cursor into the ability to get that information and I can get it on any of these parcels. You'll notice it just um, updates and I can click on that and um, save that information here or delete it if I don't need it. And the other thing you can do is you have a couple of different map options. So if I zoom in, I could change to that aerial view, the bird's eye view, which is that aerial adding in those street names and points of interest. And then also let's go back. Sometimes it gets a little wonky on me. There we go. And you've got that street side view. This map is a Bing map. So is it not going to let me select that? Maybe I need to zoom out just a little bit more. Ooh, it looks like I'm frozen. Maybe I've clicked a few too many things. Let me just give it one second and see if I can get it to go back. There we go. And let's switch back to that road. There we go. And now I can zoom out a little bit more. And if I want to go to that street side view, I'm a little bit more limited, I think, than um, the Google map. If the um, road lights up blue, that means the Bing car went down that road and I can place my little guy anywhere on that map that lights up blue. And it does give me the option, you know, to kind of walk down that street, turn around, and get a 360 view of that information. So if I was walking this way, I would see that um, Hayward's is down here at the end of this street and my neighborhood is over here. When I'm done with this view, I can click on that X and it takes me right back to my map. And from here, I can go to um, prospecting. So if I click here, it should allow me to pull the information. Maybe we want to do one more shape. Let's add one more shape because I know there actually is more houses over in this area of Milford that are similar to these other um, sections that I've highlighted. So we'll go to our draw options once again, and let's go ahead and use that freehand option because I do like to demonstrate that. And it kind of lets me just draw any squiggly shape. So imagine you're using your finger on the map and then I can just start right back at that point. And now I've included this information and I can include selection. And now it's asking me, do I just want to view my search results like we have been seeing? So we have that list or do I want to go to prospecting, which is that is what I want to do right now. I can click on prospecting and it is pulling in 447 properties from those three shapes on the map that I've added. Now from here, I definitely wanna use my filters and there's two filters I always recommend that you add in. The first one is behind MLS listings because if I'm creating mailing labels, I don't wanna send a mailer to somebody who's already associated with an agent. So I like to remove all active listings. When I select them, that option and then I click update, I do see that my list is reduced slightly. The other thing that I recommend is you probably don't want to market to somebody who has just purchased that property. So ownership, um, no, uh, recent sales is what I'm looking for. I want to go down to recent sales, open up that section, and I can toggle this anywhere from zero to 18 months. So maybe I don't want to market to anybody who's bought in the last 12 months. I can click on that. And once again, you notice I have some updates over here. Now you have lots of other options here that you can filter um, through. I do like to point out that here in CRS, land use is where you're going to find things like condo 
and single family. So if I only wanted to market to single family properties, I could come in, start typing single family. So single family residential would be what I want to select. And now my property list has narrowed down even more. So lots of other filter options you can play around with. I was hoping to be around 400 properties for this mailing. So 391, that's perfect. So in order to create those mailing lists, um, those mailing labels based on the information that I have filtered out, I'm going to come over to my right side menu. And this is where I could continue to um, add or remove options by selecting here, but there's really nothing more I need to do with this list if I'm happy with all those filters that I've used to get to these 391 properties. From here, I can either export or create the labels. And notice that I have 5,000 uh, available exports and labels that I can use every single month. So if I come in here and I do a lot of uh, creating of labels and exporting information over the next few days, when I log in around November 1st, this number is going to refresh back to that 5,000 because I get those options each and every month here in CRS. And if I'm exporting and creating labels for these 391 properties, it's not going to subtract that number from the 5,000 twice. It's just going to do it once because I'm doing both of these options for these properties. So it doesn't, you know, make me double dip on that. I get to just um, remove those 391 from my 5,000 available. And if I want to export the information, what does that look like? Why might I want to do that? I can click on export and that's going to give me details about all 391 properties that I could use in like, you know, Excel or some other, you know, um, management system for information. So if I wanted to edit the fields that I'm exporting out, I can click on that edit option and I can choose to export everything or I can come in and just, you know, select or unselect what I need or don't need. Giving you that little um, question mark, remembering when you hover over that, that gives you more details. And this lets you know that all this information that's selected is going to be exported via a CSV file. That's a comma separated value file and it's great to use for um, Excel and other CRM products. As soon as you click export, I think there's one more pop up, but when you say yes, that's when you know these 391 properties will be removed from your 5,000 um, that you get each and every month. Now, if you wanna create mailing labels, you can click on create labels. And that's going to bring up this pop-up option. Now, you'll notice that the total number of properties here is different than the number here. And that's because a couple of these um, filters are selected. So we're removing any number, uh, any addresses that don't have a zip code or if they don't have that zip code plus the additional four numbers. You can always select or unselect these as you need to. Um, and I always recommend that you leave exact duplicates selected. That way you're not, you know, creating, you know, multiple mailing labels for the same address. You can decide how that label should be created. Do you want the owner's name? or do you want it to be based on the property address? And once again, this can be dependent on those filters that you've used. So if you are marketing to out-of-state owners, um, you're gonna wanna do the owner's address um, on this. Or if you're marketing, you know, maybe trying to um, market to folks who are renting, you would wanna do that property address. And then if you want to include current resident, you can make that selection. Or if you prefer to have something else, um, like maybe you want to use the folks at, you could um, select here that you're going to replace that. And then you would just type in what you want to use. So the folks at. Some people think current resident is a little impersonal. So completely up to you what you want to do. And then you would just select that you're replacing it with that custom text. Some other options you have is 
which type of Avery label or Avery compatible label are you using? So you've got three options, the Avery 5160, 5161, 5162, and you'll notice that these labels are different sizes. So as long as you are using an Avery compatible label, um, you can use whichever product you happen to have. Another nice little feature of CRS, everybody tends to have that drawer of half-used label sheets. If you pull out that half-used label sheet and the last one printed here, you can select that here on this label option and your labels will start printing here so you can start using up those um, label sheets, you know, reduce, reuse, recycle, um, CRS helps you out with that. And then finally, typically you want to leave this set to PDF to create those labels. If you change it to Word document, you can kind of manipulate the information um, that's showing on the label. So if you're using a big enough one, you might be able to add a very small photo or you might be able to change the color of the font if you want to do that you would have to select that PDF document, to, um, excuse me, that Word document. Most folks just leave this set at PDF and go ahead and create those labels. And um, with that, you will have those labels printed so you can do that snail mail. Now, remember we came to this prospecting tab from that property search option. But if we're on our homepage and we wanna go right into prospecting, you have that ability to get to that map here. And you could start bringing up the information you wanna see under boundaries. So if you go to zip code and you wanted to go to, um, you know, that Milford zip code, you could pull that in from here. And then continuing just to narrow down with those filters available um, so that you populate the information here and then you can export or create those labels. I said we'd pop into settings, so let's do that real quick. This is where you can um, brand your information by adding in your photo and putting in your contact information. And if you wanna customize um, your results list, you have that available here. And if you want to customize um, your default counties um, that will always show for you here, you have that availability here as well. Finally, if you can just give me a couple extra minutes, I do want to hop into Paragon and show you those other access points into CRS. We did access from the tax menu, but you can also access from the map. So if I click on my map-based searches, and I want to look at CRS for one of my results, I can click on that little flag and I've got that option to pop right into CRS property report from here and that's from my Paragon map. But I also can use that ability on a property that is not part of my search results because remember CRS is that public record database. So if I click on one of the parcel lines on one of the parcels that's not in my result options, it's still gonna pull up that left side menu. This is gonna pull in any um, public record information. And once again, there is that ability to jump to the property report on this property that wasn't even part of my search results. I can also get CRS information from my spreadsheet. So when I have my results and I'm looking for that information, that little plug icon has so much valuable information. I like to click, hold, and drag that right on over so it's closer um, to my left side so I don't have to scroll for it. If I click on that plug icon, here is my option to jump in to CRS right from my search results here. And then finally, if I click on that MLS number, it brings me to that individual property report here in Paragon, and I have that access into CRS from the Skittles underneath that main photo. So hopefully over the last um, hour and two minutes, you have learned all these great ways that you can use CRS. One final way to show you is when you have listing, um, uh, when you're inputting that new listing, let me just hop into, um, back into Paragon. And I actually wanna hop into um, Paragon Connect for this. So I'm going into resources, Paragon Connect, 
Um, CRS is available in Paragon Professional or Paragon Connect when you are putting in that new listing. So I'm just clicking on my hamburger menu. I'm coming down to listings and I am starting what we would call a partial listing in Paragon Professional or unpublished here in Paragon Connect. So if I click on that option, this is where I can pull in that public record information on a new property that I'm putting in. I can select that uh, option, why that photo is showing. We'll have to change that. Um, we'll click on that plus. I just verify the state, hit select. And remember, I'm always starting with that county. So I'm going into Hillsborough County making that selection. And then I typically find the property I'm looking for by street name, but you can also do owner's last name. So I'm just gonna pop in Boxwood. And then instead of seeing all, you know, up to 30 properties available on any of the Boxwoods in Hillsborough, I'm gonna narrow that down by putting in the street number. And now I'm only going to get three options because there are three different properties in Hillsborough County that have four boxwood in them. I'm looking for that property in Milford. So from this result options, I can click autofill. It is a residential property and I can create. And now I've created that partial or unpublished listing and it's pulled in that information that was available via CRS public records. So if I click on something like location, you can see many of those required fields are always done for you. So not only does this do some of the work for you, but remember it connects your listing with CRS so that little icon can pop up and folks can get that um, information from Paragon while they're in CRS. And then of course you can get to CRS from when you're inside Paragon. So very, very symbiotic relationship between these two products and a great way to get additional information on properties that are available in your search results and that are also not because you're getting that public record information. I'm happy to stick around if anybody has any additional questions. Um, otherwise, thank you so much for joining me this morning and I hope you have a great rest of your day.